Recently, I participated in a debate amongst African-American intellectuals where on one side were the race abolitionists. Uh, This was Camille Foster and Shelby Steele who were saying, let's get out of the business of routinely referring to ourselves in terms of these discredited categories of race. And on the other side were myself and Robert Woodson, who runs a a research and policy activist center in Washington, D.C., arguing, well, yes, at the highest level of uh, intellectual abstraction, these are categories that we could well do without. But as a practical matter, in terms of mobilization, we want to do something about the Black family. We want to fight against violence in the community. We want to hold up ideals of intellectual achievement and excellence as being consistent with our identity. We feel a loyalty and attachment. We have a historical narrative about our people. These things are all artifacts of history and culture, which we eschew to our disadvantage. We, we, this is the language we speak. This is the way we move one another, et cetera. What's wrong with that? Yeah, so I'm not a race abolitionist for the reasons that, that, that you point out. You know, there's this fact that this artificial category of race um, has structured American society in particular for a very long time. And so that creates a puzzle. How do you deal with that? On the one side of this are people like Karen and Barbara Fields in their beautiful book, Racecraft, which I don't ultimately agree with, but which I think is deeply insightful, um, who say, look, this category is just so damaging in how it structures society that if we uncritically use this term of race, we're actually going to recreate all of these forms of racism that inhere in it. And so therefore, true liberation would be to dismantle the category. And then there's other people who at, at, at the extreme say, look, because this is what has structured American society in key ways, we need to encourage people to see themselves insofar as possible within that category, right? That, 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 that the most important thing to teach a six or seven year old is to think of themselves as racial beings. That is what organizations like Embrace Race say. I think there's a huge field in the middle where you can say, look, I'm a Jew. Uh, I'm not religious. Um, my family hasn't been religious for a number of generations. But the experience of genocide and, 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 and murder and discrimination that my family has gone through gives me yeah. some amount of genuine Jewish experience, right? Um, and yeah. I don't think it makes sense to give it up. In a similar way, someone like Tommy Shelby has a great philosophically liberal account for forms of black solidarity that are based in the historical experience of slavery and Jim Crow and discrimination. That this doesn't. Is, excuse me, Yasha. This is Tommy Shelby, the philosopher at Harvard. Many books, among which are "We Who Are Dark," uh, that that makes arguments along the lines you're discussing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I think that there's a huge middle field here, and the question is where within that middle field should we fall? Now, what I worry about is that you know, gravitating towards the importance of these subnational groups like race and gender and sexual orientation comes relatively naturally to us, right? America is still a very segregated place. People still have a lot of friends from within the same uh, ethnic groups. Uh, This is not about to disappear. Um, The question is, how should institutions like our universities, like our schools deal with that? Uh, And I think what they should do is to be sure that they create enough areas for encounter, enough occasions for people to meet each other, that we also build those connections beyond those groups. And especially when it comes to politics, the question is, do we want to adopt policies in which what a group gets is explicitly dependent on the ethnic group in which we're part, which I think is often going to lead to zero-sum competition between different ethnic blocs. Zero-sum competition, but historically in America, whites have won, and there's no particular reason to think that they wouldn't win it again. Or do we create more universalist policies in which we de-emphasize those forms of uh, ethnic importance in the context of public policy, in the context of who gets what, in order to actually be able to sustain uh, a more solidaristic politics? Um, You know, the most convincing part of social psychology research for the last 75 years has been the research on intergroup contact. 
And what it shows is that people from groups that have historically had deep prejudices against each other can come to have a more positive view through interaction. But that interaction has to have particular conditions attached to it. In the situation in which that interaction takes place, you need to be equals. Not perhaps in society as a whole, that may not be achievable uh, uh, in that context, but, 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 but in the situation where you're interacting, you should be equals. Secondly, you have to have a common goal. You have to be fighting for the same thing in that situation. And thirdly, the authorities should be telling you that you're expected to get along. A university campus where on your first day you're put into different affinity groups and yeah. there's an anonymous hotline to report microaggressions violates this in every possible respect. A university which mix, mixes and matches people who share rooms in the first year in random ways or with an eye to ma making people who are different from each other have that experience together, or a sports team in, 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 in elementary school or middle school or in high school where you're on the team together and you're fighting to win the match, fulfills those kinds of conditions. That doesn't mean you pretend race doesn't exist. In fact, it creates the condition in which one player on the baseball team can then say to the other player, hey, I've had this experience with police violence, I face these kind of struggles, and create understanding and empathy for those kind of uh, downstream effects from, from historical racism in the United States. It occurs to me that it's also dynamic. It, 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 it creates possibilities for new forms of identity and, and cross-cutting connections. 